In this video, we'll go over all of the new cards announced from the past week and try to compress it into a bite-sized video. First up, we've got a new trap card called Fleeting Infinity. If you control no cards in the field, you can activate it straight from your hand, just like Struggling Battle. And its effect is to simply negate the effect of a monster for that turn, just like Breakthrough Skill. But additionally, if activated the old-fashioned way, you also get to negate the effects of spell and traps in the same column as this card. Which, I mean, might be situationally useful. But off the top of my head, I can't see anything super amazing about column-specific spell or trap card negation. After all, Broken Line has a similar effect, except it also destroys any cards it negates, and no one plays that. But the effect negation of this isn't column restricted, and effect negation is always good. So, eh, tech choice at best? I wouldn't play it over Solemn Strike though. Great Fly. This is the wind version of the attribute specific Link monsters, who all have pretty much the same effect of giving 500 more attack to monsters of their attribute, requiring two monsters of their attributes as the Link materials, and being able to recover a monster of their attribute on death. And just like the other attribute specific Link monsters, we'll probably see lots of play as its floating effect, summon requirements, and Link markers are all very convenient. It's only a matter of time before they release the other attribute Link monsters. A new elemental hero card, Solid Man, was announced and seems to be a good target for Masked Hero Dian. With mediocre stats, standard with all of the new elemental heroes released for some reason, its effects are to special summon an elemental hero from your hand on summon, and if sent to the graveyard by a spell effect, like say, mask change, you can target a different elemental hero monster from your graveyard and special summon it, like say, elemental hero shadow mist. So honestly? Pretty good support for hero decks, since they all revolve around Shadow Mist anyway, and he's got two ways to special summon Shadow Mist to activate its search effect. And really, Dian isn't a half bad masked hero. He's just not as overpowered as Dark Law, and didn't have any good elemental hero targets until now. And lastly, we've got a new FA Tuner and Synchro monster. The tuner, called F.A. Auto Navigator, this card can special summon itself from your hand or graveyard, which is great, by reducing the level of an F.A. monster on the board back to its original level. Then this card gains the levels lost. Also, when this card is special summoned or normal summoned, you get to search out an F.A. field spell card. Now, both of these effects are pretty good, with its search effect being a little better, but Let's take a look at the Synchro Monster next. F.A. Motorhome Transport requires one tuner plus one or more non-tuner monsters, so generic materials. It has the standard gain 300 attack times its level plus gain one level each time an F.A. Speller Trap card is activated. And its bonus effects for reaching higher levels are immunity to battle and card destructions at level 11, and being able to special summon an F.A. monster from your graveyard at level 13. Both effects are pretty neat. In order to bring out this card with a new tuner though, you're going to want to use its special summon effect when the F.A. card on field is at level 8, in order to have the materials for a level 9 synchro monster. And considering F.A. monsters usually gain their extra effects at around level 7, you're going to have to give up a card that's been on the field for a while and the Synchro Monster needs to be leveled up two times to gain its destruction immunity, and four times to reach its good effect. So, I don't know about it. I don't know how fast FAs can use spell and trap cards per turn to increase their levels, so I guess it really depends on that. But for my own personal views, with very little experience with the deck, it looks like the tuner is really good, and the Synchro Monster is kinda okay, I guess. Okay, and that's it for the first episode of Bite-Sized Yu-Gi-Oh! News. I do a similar series like this over on my main channel, and that one seems to do well, so I thought I'd try my hand at doing it on my Yu-Gi-Oh! channel as well. So, what do you guys think? Should I continue to do this weekly? 
If so, is there anything you'd like to see me add to it? Just let me know, as I'm really looking for feedback on this thing. Of course, if it's nothing but negative feedback, I'll probably just not do it anymore either. And with that, I'll see you all next week.